Okay, so today I will show you how to create your own PC stats display to show stuff like CPU usage or the memory consumption. And you can put this on your desk or maybe perhaps incorporate it into your custom PC case. Yeah, that's up to you, of course. So let's get started. Actually, before we do so, let me talk about the sponsor of today's video, which is PCBWay. And not only do you can get PCBs, you can also get 3D printing or CNC machining. And if you use the link down in the description, you can get 10 PCBs for free, only paying for shipping. So again, thank you very much, PCB, for sponsoring this video. So let's get back to the display. We will be using this display, which is called 5-inch smart screen by Turing smart screen and what's different about this screen compared to other screens is the fact that there is no HDMI connection so it doesn't act as the external monitor. Instead this display also includes the microcontroller that is responsible for drawing all the stuff, all the images and videos which means that there is no overhead for your PC. So the computer is only sending simple messages to the display for example saying the CPU usage is 50% and the display will show it and this is done by this USB-C connection which is both for sending the messages and providing the power for the display. So you really need only one cable to connect it to your PC. In order to get started, you need to download a dedicated software for the display. So you need to go to tourx.com and click the download button. And here are a few download links for 3.0 inch and 5 inch display. And since I have the 5 inch version, I will click this 5 inch app English version. This is what's included in the zip file. There are some helpful files, some images, but what's important is this USB monitor L.exe. Now, in order to run it, you have to right click and run it as administrator, otherwise it will not run properly. But once you do it, you will see something like this. So this is the main screen for the control panel. And you can select from quite a few different themes. So for example, this one, and then you click the run button and it should connect to your device, transfer some files if necessary, and then you should see it running on the display. So again, this display supports displaying all kinds of data, few types of gauges, displaying transparent PNG images, and I think that the best part is being able to display background video. It just makes things much more interesting. Speaking of video, there is only a limited number of internal storage space, so at some point when you are trying different themes, you might click the run button and see something like this. Insufficient space, you need to delete some files first. So what you want to do is go to the device, and here click the refresh storage and you will see that the internal storage is about 10 megabytes and we are using all of it for our video files so if i click refresh in here for the internal video files i can select some of those and delete the ones that i don't really need for example i don't need this one i can delete it and so on and so on for any of the themes you can select a different background so going to home you can click the set background and change it to a different video file and there are many different video files included in the zip file you can also flip the screen if it works better for your case and you can set the brightness note that you can only do it when it's not running so when the team is running you cannot really change those settings you can spend as much time as you want going through all those individual teams but what i really want to do at this point is to create my own team and i want to create something simple but at the same time showing all kinds of different components like those linear gauges as well as the radial gauges and of course i want the video being played on the background for the video, I will go to Pixabay, where you can download some stock footage for free, and I will search for Plexus, which is kind of effect that I'm looking for. And there are some really nice examples, but I really like this pink one, so I will download it. Now, the nice thing about the display is that the resolution is 800 by 480, but you can actually use a different video's resolutions. So I can go with whatever is being available, for example, this 1280 by 720. And you can see it's about 1.2 megabytes, which is perfectly fine to fit for our display. And I can actually quite easily test how this video will look like on the display by going to the device tab, selecting the internal video folder, clicking the upload button and selecting the video, hit the open and it should upload to the display. After that, I can click the video and select play selected, which will play me the video on the display, obviously without any additional stuff, but I can still see how it looks like and decide whether I like it or not. And you can see that there is a little bit of bending going on on the display, but I still like how it looks like. Now I want to add three sci-fi panels that will be floating above the video and that will be showing all kinds of statistics. And for this, we of course need to first create this graphic somehow. And for that, we will be using a free online graphics editing tool called PhotoP that is free to use. You just go to photop.com. And the nice thing is that it can also open the video files. So if I click open from computer, I can select this MP4 file and use it as a reference for the background. So I'll click open and it can open all the individual frames, but we don't really need all those frames. So I'll lower the FPS number to maybe one frames per second which will only import some of those images and that's perfectly fine because again we only need it as a reference and the next thing will be to make sure that the resolution is 800 by 480 which is the resolution of the display and that's a two-step process so the first step is to go to image image size and make sure that the height is set to 480 so we'll resize the image so it will be 8 something by 480 click ok button and then i will click the image canvas size and here set the resolution to 800 by 480 which will crop the resolution to 800 by 480 so now the image is sized the same way as the display and what i want to do is 
this at like free floating like sci-fi panels and then show the info over those panels so it probably makes sense to make those panels the same size and for this i will create few helper layers so i'll create a new layer which will be outside of this group and i will select the rectangular selection and make sure that the size is set to fixed size and it will be 800 by 10 pixels i will create the selection on top of the canvas and fill it with some color so for example edit fill and i have the color set to pink so it's perfectly fine for my case it will be just a helper layer click the ok button then select the arrow move tool and create a copy and i can do it in multiple different ways i can right click and select duplicate layer or i can drag the layer with the alt key pressed or i can click ctrl j to create a copy what I want to do is have four different copies and the top and bottom one should be touching the canvas. Then I will select all four layers and select this button, which is for equal gaps. And it will create me the visual space for my individual panels. If I want, I can create one more layer and create again rectangular selection in the size of 10 by 480 and do the same thing. So I will create a new layer, click edit fill and fill it with the foreground color. Click control D to deselect. And now I have a space for our panels. So I will zoom in a little bit more. Then I will select this rectangle tool and draw a rectangle inside this gap, which might be, for example, sized like this. If I want, I can select edit free transform and make it slightly smaller. And if I only want to make it smaller from the right side, I have to press the shift key at the same time as I'm dragging this handle. So maybe this will be the right size. I can hide the helper layers, which I don't need anymore. And I can double click this shape layer and maybe make it a different color because for now I want to make it as visible as possible, even though later on it might be a different color, maybe some faded black. So the planar rectangle is kind of boring, right? So I want to add some elements into it, some more shapes. And for that, I will right click this button and select the line tool and set it to, for example, five pixels. And I don't want to create a new layer, but I want to instead subtract it from the current layer so i'll select subtract and then draw it together with the shift key pressed so it's snapping to 45 degree angle and maybe remove this corner i might increase the width to maybe 10 pixels and maybe remove this corner entirely and then i can go back to for example one pixel and add some additional elements so for example i will remove this line i will remove this line maybe this corner as well and previously i've also created some kind of pattern like you know having multiple of those lines next to each other for example like this so maybe five lines on the bottom of the shape now at any point i can press ctrl h or go to view show extras which will toggle between showing or not showing those outlines and you will notice that maybe some of those lines are actually not being subtracted from our shape i can easily fix it by selecting the path selection tool selecting the shape actually let me show the outlines so selecting this shape and change it from unite to subtract and i will do the same thing with this line so this will be also subtract the nice thing is that i can still have the line selected even if i don't show the outline so i can for example click this line and i can use the arrow keys to move it around or maybe this one to move it around like like so so i can tweak the shape quite easily okay i can spend quite a lot of time playing with the actual shape but i'm pretty happy with the result for now so i will double click the layer and change the fill color to some darker pink one and i believe i've used values of 37 34 and 39 in my previous example what i will also do is i will lower the opacity so the, for the fill opacity i will make it slightly transparent so say to for example 70 percent which will reveal the background a little bit more now the floating window looks kind of faded but uh, to my experience it is still very visible on the display because the display is showing colors slightly brighter i would also like to make the top part of the window the header to be a different color and there are multiple ways how to do this probably one of the easiest one is to use layer effects so i will double click the layer somewhere around here and open the layer style and i will add the new layer style which will be the inner shadow so i'll click inner shadow and by default it looks nothing like a header but let's give it a minute and we will fix it so i'll change the blending mode to normal and change color to some wild one and again i think i was using values of 128 34 and 181 for rgb values i will change the angle to be 90 degrees so it will be coming from the top so 90 degrees and i will also change the size to be zero pixels so it will not be blurred and then i can use the distance slider to move this shadow around so for example it will look like this and i kind of like this result so i'll click the ok button and i think that i'm happy with how the window looks like so one more time i will show the helper layers like so and then i will create a copy of this window again by few different ways for example duplicating layer and then moving it with the shift key press so it's moving horizontally or vertically and then using arrow keys to make some slight adjustments and again one more copy for the third panel like this make sure it's aligned properly and then hide all the helper layers and if any time i decided i want to make it different for example i want this header to be more visible i can double click this effect button go to inner shadow and maybe increase the opacity to 100 and do this of course for all the other layers so that's something i forgot actually so i have to fix it now okay so now i'm happy with the result so we can use this for our team 
so we need to export the individual images and we need to export one image for the background even though it will be replaced by video later on and we need to export the image of those floating windows so for the background i will maybe create a copy of one of those layers move it outside and name it properly which means that i have to use naming convention of dash e dash and then use some name for example pink plexus background and what i usually do is i right click the layer and select some color so i know that this layer will be exported but it's of course optional then i will group all those windows so Control g to group them together and again use a naming convention of dash e dash and maybe pink plexus windows then i can jump to file export layers unclick the done used palettes and you can see that we have two exportable layers so i'll click export layers and we have those two images that we can extract somewhere after that i will jump to the tours x application and i will start with some predefined theme and i think that this one looks perfectly fine for my case so it has all the details it has the radial gauges as well as the linear gauges so what i will do is i will jump to the theme edit and load that theme now first thing you want to do is to change it from vertical to horizontal because it's a horizontal theme and i will make this window slightly bigger but it doesn't make much of a difference because some of those elements don't resize now the UI might be slightly confusing but here is a preview of the theme the left list shows the possible elements that could be added this list shows the elements which are already in the theme you can see that even if i have an english version of the application some of those has chinese names and this part is used to set the settings so like the position size font or maybe some colors so as a first step i will change the background image and this overlay image so we already have two images inside this theme so this one is a background image i will click the select image and select the background image and then i will select the second image and select the foreground image with those windows so again click the select image and select those windows and those should be on the position 10 and 10 so now we have a background we have the foreground and we have a lot of elements that we can move around and style to our needs actually i have more elements that i need so for example the drive usage i will not use those so i will delete it as well as the temperature so gpu temperature cpu temperature ram usage i might use the hdd temperature i don't need the status bar means the linear gauge you can see that the ram usage is twice so i'll delete one of those and the arc bar is the radial gauge so we have the gpu gram usage i will probably not use the gram usage so i'll delete it so we are left with gpu usage cpu usage ram usage there is a time i think i like to have a time in here but i don't need the volume and i don't need the weather now once you have the item selected in the list you can move it with your mouse which is quite convenient so for example the gpu might be for example in here the cpu model i will move it to here and i will reserve the last one for the ram so ram model will be down here i'll do the same thing with the status bar so gpu usage cpu usage and the ram usage and i might change the styling of those progress bars slightly so i'll set the background color to be black and also show the background color and i don't want to have any border around and i will do this for all those gauges so no border black background and show the background color and also for the last one the ram usage black background color no border and show the background and maybe make it slightly bigger so instead of 118 let's make it 160 for all those unfortunately we have to select all of those one by one and then make those changes i will also move the radial gauges so this is the gpu usage should be the one in the middle the cpu usage will be the one on top and the ram usage will be the one on the bottom and again i will change the color slightly so for the filled color i might use one of the violet ones which i already have predefined i just sample the color from the photopia file and i will use the same color for all three gauges and i might even make those slightly bigger so instead of 71 for the radius i might go for example with 85 and of course i need to also move those linear gauges slightly more to the right side maybe something like this let's also add some values so i will click the data and click the add element that will create a new readout and for the first one i really want to use the cpu usage but i will change alignment to be middle and color to be white and i will move it inside this first gauge then i will duplicate it by clicking this copy button and for this one i will change it to the gpu usage and then one more time copy this one and this one will be the ram usage I also might add some text into those headers so I'll click the text and select add element and you can use a scroll wheel on your mouse to change the text size so this one will be CPU copy it one more time this one will be GPU copy it one more time and the last one will be RAM and just for fun let's add few more text so I'll copy this one one more time make it a little bit smaller and maybe changes to central processing unit copy this one more time this one will be of course graphics card and the last one will be computer memory there is still this number 100 floating around and i think that this is this ram usage which we are not using so i can safely delete it we don't need it the last change will be making sure that the time is set to the same font as all the other elements which is ban ban shift so i will select the time and set the right font and if i click this double menu it takes like a minute to load so i will select ban shift condensed 
maybe, and maybe make it slightly bigger so I can see what's the current time, like so. And I think that we are almost finished. The very important piece is to set the correct name for your team. And I found out that you cannot use any existing team name, so I'll create a new one. So let's call it Plink Plexus Tutorial and select Save Team. It will not show you the save dialog, but instead it will save it into the Teams folder. Unfortunately, you cannot just close the team editing and open the drop-down menu to see your new team. You have to instead restart the application to see your team in the list. But once you restart the application, you should see the theme in the drop down menu. So let me just find it, which is this one pink plexus tutorial. And the only thing left to do is to make sure that you click the set background, select the background video, and then click the run button. So it will connect to the device, prepare the video, and in a minute, you should see your team running on the display. And that seems to be the case. So now we can see the CPU usage, the GPU usage, as well as the RAM usage, and also the clock. You can see I've added also my logo on the corner. I really like the screen quality. This is the IPS display, so the colors are nice and its brightness is very good. And the best thing is the price. I think that this is the one of the cheapest monitors that you can get for your PC statistics. To me, probably the only downside is the software, which is somehow not very easy to use. And quite a lot of times I was modifying my teams just to find out that it wasn't saved, which was kind of disappointing. Also, the provided software could be only used with the Windows machines. However, I did find out that someone called Matthew Hudebean is working on a Python script for those displays, which means that now you can use it for any operation system, which is kind of cool. And I would like to try it perhaps in the next video. Let me know if you are interested. I also did forgot to mention a few things. You can get this display in black or white color. And also inside the box, you have this very small plastic stand that you can use to put this display on your desk. Although I'm a little bit worried that it might fall down. It's definitely not the best stand that you can use. On the other hand, I really like the USB cable because it has the 90 degree connection on both ends, so it should be much easier to connect it to your PC without you know, the cable sticking around somewhere. I'm using a different cable only because the provided one wasn't long enough. And that's all for today. Thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions, please put those down in the comment section. If you've already created some kind of custom team, please put the link in the comment section as well. I would really like to see it. And thank you very much for watching, and I hope to see you soon. Thanks, and bye.